Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chono and welcome to episode 27 of Network Chat Programming. So today we're going to talk about if the client kind of disconnects, you know, not cleanly, if it's all dirty and stuff and it's kind of disconnection and what happens is, um, I don't know, the, the user decides to force quit it or, you know, terminate the process if you're on Windows or if the computer just loses power and crashes or if the computer crashes, right? Or if, um, or if the, the, the client loses a network connection, for whatever reason, the server can no longer contact the client, okay? So it needs to kick the client out of there because uh, the client is no longer connected, okay? And we need to handle that. So what we'll have to do is we've got this little thing here called managing, all right? We've got this manage clients method. And what we're gonna do in there is, well, as you probably guessed, we're gonna manage our clients. And the way that we, we're gonna do that is every so often, we're gonna send a bit of a ping, right? So for each of these clients here, right? for in i equals zero, i is less than clients dot size, i plus plus. And by the way, pro tip, you do not want to go ahead and make it for each loop. So for clients, uh, uh, c uh, clients, right? And this will actually loop through every client clients and you'll have c as a as a thing and it should have been server clients, of course. But um, you don't want to, you don't want to do this. Oops, server client. You don't want to do this um, because occasionally you can get issues when you run into multiple threads and you can have thread concurrency issues. So don't do it this way, okay? A for loop, rather than for each loop, do one of these. It'll be much, much safer and you'll get much less uh, exceptions and problems, okay? Important, okay, anyway. So what we'll do is uh, for each of these clients, we'll essentially send something to them and then we'll kind of want to get a bit of a response from them, okay? So I just realized that instead of doing it this way, we could just simply go ahead and go send uh, to all. We'll send a message, okay? And we'll start this with something along the lines of, I don't know, I don't wanna start with C. We'll start with I, I don't know why, we'll just start it with I. And then we'll just send a message kind of like server. <laughs> I don't know, we could say ping, whatever. So we'll send that to each of the clients. Let's terminate this, looks like we're still running the server. Um, all right. So while running, we'll send we'll send each of them one of these things, and then what we'll have to do is we'll have to see what their response is. Okay. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to see if the client has responded or not? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, make another array list here. Right. We'll make a private list of uh, of server clients. Oh no, actually, no, not a private list of server clients, my bad. We'll make a private list private list of strings uh, and we'll call this client response. And we'll set this equal to a new array list uh, of strings, of course. And what, what we'll do here is basically, we'll go back here and we'll say, if, uh, if we start, so we'll, we'll do another else if in our process here, else if uh, our string here starts with an I, then we know that, um, oops, make sure you close that off as well and get rid of this. All right, great, syntax is awesome. <laughs> now, um, what we're gonna do is, is essentially we'll, we're gonna, well, we'll say that as long as the client has kind of, I don't know, as long as the client has, um, has kind of replied to us, right? If it starts with an I, that's kind of like a server kind of checking reply thing. We'll go ahead and we'll add it, of course, into the client response. So, client response. Um, dot add and then of course we'll, we might go ahead and just split it straight away so string uh which is string whoops dot split and the rejects that we'll use are just slash i slash or slash a slash okay um and then we'll go one so in other words because we expect to get that kind of message we'll just make sure that if we get a message such as we'll probably send the id so if we get a message such as that um we'll just extract the important data which is the middle out of it could have just probably turned it into integers but doesn't really matter. So um, let's move this one inside, of course, and we should be sweet. Yep, we are sweet. Um, okay, right? Okay. Now, what we want to do is um, <clears throat> now that we've kind of got this array list, and the reason we do this is because we'll check them one at a time, kind of thing, and we'll we'll rest in between. Um, but what we'll do is we'll say, as we're managing this, we'll say um, that. Essentially, for each of the clients here, so for in i equals zero, i is less than all of our clients, i plus plus. Um, what we'll do is we'll say that if I guess if the client response dot contains 
uh, let's see. So clients dot get i dot sorry clients dot get i dot get id right. So if, in other words, if our client response um, does not contain an ID with this stuff, then what we actually need to do is obviously there's a problem, okay? Because the client hasn't replied to us yet. So what we'll do is we'll handle that. Um, now, one thing we have to do, I just realized, let's just change this string into integer, okay? That's probably going to make things a bit easier. Um, and if we go down here, instead of adding a, this string dot split, we'll also have to add an integer dot pass int, and then we'll just uh, kind of come in here and make sure that it's being cast for an integer. Okay, just like that. Um, and then it'll just make it a bit easier to compare the two without having to always do those kind of things. So one thing we need to check is because remember in, this was a while ago, and I'm sorry that I, I'm i only getting to this now, but uh, we have our server client, yeah. And um, we've got this variable in it called attempt. And we created that when we created this class, but I didn't really talk about it. I said that I covered it later and here we are that was some nice foreshadowing for you guys some uh, some sick breaking bad style foreshadowing so um in other words if we do if, if we're not containing it right we also need to check if our attempts are, have kind of have kind of expired so if clients dot uh in fact let's do this so client uh sorry server client c equals clients dot get i and then we'll just put a c here um if c dot attempt right is greater than or equal to let's just say our max attempts and we'll make a quick field up here called private final int max attempts and we'll set it equal to five for now so in other words the the client has five chances to respond until it's basically disconnected so it's kind of like a retrying connection kind of thing so in other words if our attempt is currently greater than max attempts then uh, we need to disconnect that client. So we'll go ahead and go disconnect c.getID with a status of false. So in other words, it was an unclean exit. However, if um, if we haven't uh, reached our maximum attempts yet, keep trying. So all we'll do is we'll go ahead and set c.attempt plus plus. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is what happens, this stuff here that we just read that, that, that we just wrote all of this stuff happens only if we couldn't find a client response from the client from one of the clients only if one of our clients didn't respond to us so we asked them hey man how's it going and he just sat there like an idiot and didn't reply to us because he's mean that's a bad thing that's why we want to disconnect him okay um however if we did receive a, a response then everything's great right right so what we want to do is we want to remove that client response clearly because we've because we're going to send these now, uh, well, pretty uh, pretty often, client response dot remove the ID of the client. Now we can't simply go ahead and say c dot get ID, and the reason is you'll notice that remove. Uh, you can actually, if you just hover your mouse here, you'll see that it's actually using the int index remove. Okay, so what it's doing is rather than removing, this will actually give us a size out of bounds exception because what will happen is. We're trying to remove the ID, but it's thinking we're talking about the index because they're both integers. So if we go ahead and go new integer and then enclose it in that, you'll see that it actually uses a different method. It uses the object method, which is the one we, the one we want. Okay, so great, we've removed it. <clears throat> now what we want to do, <clears throat> now what we want to do is obviously also clear the number of attempts. So c dot attempt equals zero. Okay, because um. Maybe it took a few times for it to work, but if it did work in the end, we want to clear those attempts. Otherwise, if we're stuck on four attempts and then it fails for one other time, gone, the client's disconnected. We don't want to do that. So hopefully this will work, okay? So to test this out, it's going to be a bit difficult, but that's all right. To test this out, what we'll do is, um, oh, this is the other thing that we should mention. This is, this is going to use a, an awful lot of processing power, okay? This is doing it as fast as it can. There's no need for it to be doing it as fast as it can. The other thing you'll probably notice is that this attempt will happen really quickly, okay? Maybe the client's a bit slow. This will happen really quickly. This will probably disconnect a client in about two seconds. So what we wanna do is after we send, we just wanna wait for a while, okay? And how do we do that? Well, we just sleep for a while, okay? So we'll type in thread.sleep for probably about around two seconds. <clears throat> now, thread.sleep happens to be pretty inaccurate. We don't care about that in this case. We're not using it for any kind of timing. We're using it to kind of just slow down, okay? Because we don't need to be doing this all the time. 
So what this will do is it'll kind of uh, free up the system resources that are to do with this thread in particular, um, this manage thread. Um, we can also do, you probably would have noticed manage dot sleep, but no one ever uses it like that. You can see that it's actually a static method because um, thread dot sleep will actually, it'll kind of pick up on which thread it's being executed in and thus it'll make this specific manage thread sleep. Not, so it won't make our listen thread sleeps. Don't worry about that, okay? Thread dot sleep is awful for timing, but it's great for if you just want to take a break, okay? Um, and this will make this will make the while running loop run a lot slower. So it'll probably run once every two seconds or so. Um, and be, with a few nanoseconds, uh, give or take. Um, but that'll just make sure that we're not running this as fast as we possibly can because it's useless to us. We don't want to be using that many resources for something that simple. Now, let's uh, save this and start server main. <clears throat> we'll also start our login here. So, cherno localhost8192. Great. And we'll go ahead and hit login. Now, if we were to go up, and you guys can't see this now, but I'm just going to the Apple menu and force quit. If we go into force quit, or we could do, do this inside Eclipse as well, but if we go, this is our com dot the cherno dot cherno, the cherno chat dot login. If we force quit that, and we force quit it, then it's gone. And I think so is our server. Did our server go as well there? No, it didn't. Here it is. So, oh, here we go. And then we get client churn and timed out. So you guys didn't see that because it switched views, unfortunately. Let me just see if I can kind of organize so it's a bit better. Um, what we'll do here is go back to console. Uh, the, so you can see the server still running. If we start the client out, the client up again, and I'll keep the view on the server. I actually won't be able to in a minute, but um, localhost 8192 login. What I'll do is we've logged in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, Exit the server. Let me just ignore this first time down, right? I've just logged in again with an identifier of 5277. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go back here and I'm going to switch to the client. So I'm in the client now and close it and then switch back to the server. So what essentially I've just demonstrated is what, what will happen, I guess, if we are uh, if we don't send anything. So you can see it's timing out and we're disconnecting. So what will happen, but obviously we haven't made the client reply yet, okay? So if I go ahead and I start server main again, because I'm not running anything. Um, that was a very poor demonstration by me, sorry about that. But if I start up, if, if, if I start this up again, go localhost, hey, 192, hit login, and, it, and I just wait here for like five seconds. Oh, it'll be 10 seconds actually. But let's just wait for a while. Okay, you can see that actually in debug, Every now and then we're getting another, uh, okay, and there we go. We timed out, okay? Because it sent, it sent out, it sent us those uh, five kind of attempts, but we never replied. And the reason we haven't replied yet, we are, and if you type something like a test, it won't return to us, okay? Because the server's disconnected us. Now, um, the reason it's disconnected us, and we can't send this anymore because we're disconnected, but the reason it disconnected us is because it didn't get those messages back. And why didn't it get those messages back? Because we haven't actually coded the client to do that. Okay, so over here in client window, where we have all of our code here, let me just make some more room here real quick. Come on, there you go. Um, in our, uh, let's see, okay, so message starts with M. Go ahead and go, else if message dot starts with I. Okay, slash I slash. Then what happens is it's clearly a, um, the server's trying to get into contact with, contact with us. So in this case, all we'll do is we'll say, um, let me just think for a minute. I guess we'll just say something on the lines of, um, well, string, our string text will be uh, an I along with our ID. So client.getID along with an E at the end. And we'll just simply go ahead and uh, send that text, right? I think we called it text, yeah we did. Uh, and this will be false, so we don't wanna print it to the console or anything. Um, and that should work, okay? And now the server shouldn't time us out. So if we go back into here, that's why we have those attempts as well, because occasionally uh, our network might drop out for like five seconds, well five seconds, that's a lot, for like 500 milliseconds, and we don't wanna instantly disconnect the client. So we'll launch a, um, we'll launch a server main here launch that based, go to login, launch that based. Um, Cherno, localhost, 8192, login. See so here we've logged in. Let's just wait a while. And if you come into here, you can see that 
I keep showing, yeah, you see, you see that kind of thread that just blinks for a second? That's us sending the ping, okay? Um, and you can see it's not timing us out. We're still here. Great, isn't it? It is pretty sweet. So now if we go into the client, into login here, and we terminate it, so we're not ending it cleanly, we're terminating it, you can see here. You can see the server's still sending that and it's not getting a reply anymore. So wait for like three more times, two, and then last one, and then now, we get the client timed out, okay? So what happens is the server's tried to send five messages and it's got none of those back in a row. So in other words, we've timed out and it's disconnected us from the server. And you can see it's no longer sending that anymore. So that's how that works. I hope that kind of cleared it up for you guys. That's how we disconnect if it's not a, if, if it's not a clean disconnection, okay? If the, um, if the client permanently loses their internet connectivity or for some reason their computer crashes, we can disconnect them as well, okay? That's pretty much it, guys. We are done, okay? In terms of actual, I guess, um, in terms of actual uh, chat application, we're done. This is the end of network chat programming. Um, so if you guys were looking for the kind of the bare minimum without any kind of plugins, I guess I'd call them, then you're done. This is now a fully functional chat application, okay? Now the next few episodes, I'm gonna show you guys how to um, do a few of the things that you requested. One of the features was private messaging. One other question was uh, to see clients, how many clients are online and stuff like that. Um, and to, to see who's online, okay? That was a requested feature. Um, and then there was another um, feature that I think, well, I, I'm probably gonna, ne next episode I'll show you guys how to actually use, I, I guess, give commands to the server. So if you're running the server, you can see who's online, how many clients there are in like a command based interface, and then we'll implement a, sim a similar thing for um, for uh, for the client side, GUI. But um, that's it, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Network Chat Programming. Great series, and then the next episodes are pretty much just expanding on what, what, what we've done, but this is the entire framework for a network chat application. And then soon we'll move on to doing this stuff in game programming series for multiplayer. Okay, so essentially not chatting, of course. Oh, we, we might add that, but primarily, of course, being able to play this as like an MMO essentially, but on um, our game programming series. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please hit the like button for what is officially kind of, unofficially, I want to say, the last episode of network chat programming. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of network chat programming. Later, guys.